Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to cover seven tips and tricks to make you more efficient on Lightburn. One of the most popular videos that I have on my channel is tips and tricks videos. So I thought I'd do cover seven that I haven't covered before. If you pay attention to these, they can really speed up your workflow. Let's go ahead and head over to Lightburn and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Tip number one. See all these colors down here? A lot of people use these colors as settings. The problem with that is you only have 29 colors and I have way more settings than that. I mean, I've got 20 settings just for leatherette. So even though it might sound like it's a good idea initially, what's gonna happen is you're gonna run out of colors with the amount of settings that you have. I like to use colors for a function instead of a setting. And so what I normally do, and you can pick whatever four colors you prefer, but once you pick those colors, use those four primary colors for every project you do. And what I mean by that is I have four colors. I, have, I use black as my frame color. And what does frame mean? Well, what frame means is if I'm putting a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of wood in my laser, I'm gonna illustrate that with my black layer. If I'm putting a four inch coaster in my laser, I'm gonna draw a four inch by four inch rectangle or square, and I'm gonna color it black. And what that does is that gives me a boundary to work within, or even if you're doing cutting boards, you would illustrate the, the, uh, the shape of that cutting board uh, with a black layer. Typically that layer is always turned off. Um, we're not going to output that. That's just a reference uh, so I know where my design's going. So typically the, the frame layer is going to be uh, uh, black for me. Um, I use red for cut and it doesn't matter whether I'm cutting leatherette or I'm cutting uh, uh, plywood or whatever I'm cutting, it's always going to be a red layer. Um, and then I use blue for my engrave and green for my score. The beauty of this method is that I only have to worry about four colors, regardless of the project that I have. Once I have my design done, I've color coded my design, then all I do is I would come in here, of course, uh, the black is uh, going to be turned off. The output's going to be turned off, so settings really don't matter. And then all I would do is come in here and uh, illustrate the cut, come down here to a cut, assign my setting there, go to my engrave, come here to an engrave, assign my uh, setting there. If I need my score, I would come here and come down to my uh, score and assign it. And so the way the workflow goes, and it works out really slick. I love this method. It saves me a lot of time. I design, I color code based on function. Then I go into my uh, settings library and assign, assign the settings that I want to use for that project. Give it a try. I think you'll save yourself a ton of time. And you'll thank me when you've got to open that project that you haven't seen for six months. You'll know exactly what you're doing. Hope that helps. Tip number two, um, I love this feature. I use it all the time. So let's assume for a minute that these different colored shapes represent a file that you purchased online and you've imported it and it comes in a bunch of weird, strange colors. Remember, we're gonna start using color as a function, not as a setting. And so what I wanna be able to do is, again, be consistent with my color and the way I would do that, let's say that, uh, you know, we've got purple and green and light blue and I need to change those to my primary colors. Well, let's assume for a minute that this fuchsia color I want to turn as maybe my cut color. All you have to do is hold down the shift button or the shift key, select your layer and it's going to select all the magenta looking ones. Now I can come over here and let's say that we want to turn that red. I can select the red color and now all of those are my cut color. If I needed to take my, uh, my uh, 06 blue color, I could hold the shift key down, click it, and let's say that that was going to be my score. I would click green and now it's my score color. Um, we got one more, we got up here, our, our other green color that's not our primary color. Again, hold the shift key, click on the green, and let's say that that needed to be blue. 
And so you can see that by holding the shift key down and clicking on your layer, it's gonna select everything that you've got on your desktop that's that color, and that way you can systematically change to the colors that mean something to you. So that's usually what I do is I'll import a design that I may have purchased or got, and uh, that's the first thing I'll do is I'll color code it based on what I'm whether I'm gonna be cutting or engraving or scoring. So that's just a fast way. Hold the shift key down, click on your layer, go down to your color palette, change your color, and you're on your way. Okay, tip number three. One of the things that we all know is cutting wood in general is different today than it's ever been. And so what I've adopted is I will come, I've got a simple, just a little uh, one inch square and circle that I have right here that's uh, in my basic shapes in my um, art library that I drag out on every project. And what I'll do is I'll cut out a little one inch square and one inch circle to ensure that the cut settings that I used last time is gonna work this time before I start doing my main project. You don't wanna get uh, you know halfway or three quarters through your project and realize that the wood has changed a little bit and you're gonna have to uh, redo a bunch of cuts on your, on your wood. So just adopt a quick little circle and square. If you test that and it works great, move on with your project. It'll save you a lot of time. Tip number four, we're gonna study a little bit more about how the fill feature works in Lightburn. You'll be amazed on just some very minor changes in the fill command. You can completely change the way your design looks. So I've got this design with some mountains, a little camper, welcome to our uh, camp. And I thought I'd just illustrate this for you. And um, when you see kind of the differences you can make with very little effort, um, give this a try. So one of the basic things that you've got to remember when you're using the fill mode is if you start from the outside and you work in, just remember this one basic rule and you'll get this really fast. So every time from the outside going in, if you cross a line, it's gonna fill it in between the two lines. So if I zoom in right here, if you go from the outside and you cross a, a line, it's gonna turn the laser on until it gets to another line. So what that means is it's gonna engrave this and then when it crosses this line for the for this text, it's gonna turn it off. Again, it's gonna turn it back on, turn it off, and it's just on, off, on, off. Matter of fact, if we preview this, let me select it and we'll preview it. You can see that we crossed the line, it turned the laser on. Remember, everything in black is what's gonna be engraved away. It crossed another line and it turned it off. It crossed another line, it turned it on, another line turned it off. So you go on, off, on, off. So this would be considered an inverted engrave, meaning that the background is all engraved away. Well, how do I get that back to a, a, a normal engrave? Well, all we've got to do is add one line to any part of it, and you'll see where we're going to dramatically change the way this looks. So I'm going to say OK to that. We're gonna come in here, I'm gonna select just the perimeter of the um, design. I'm gonna use my offset tool and I'm gonna offset it outward uh, just a little bit. I'm gonna say okay. Now watch what happens. So because we've added a, an additional line, it's gonna completely invert it back to the way you might think it should be. So now when it crosses that first line, it's gonna engrave between these two lines here and then it's gonna turn it off and then when it crosses the text, it's gonna uh, turn it back on. So just with one line addition, um, you, can, you can really dramatically change the way it looks. There's one other thing we could do. If we wanted to do something different with our text down here, we could go ahead and say okay. We're gonna come down here, zoom in here, and you notice that just my uh, text is highlighted. If I use the outline tool and let's shrink it down a little bit, maybe that's gonna be okay. So we just basically generated an outline of our text. Watch what's gonna happen now to our design. Now you can see that we've got, this is an example of what it would be 
before, this is what it would look like just by adding a line. And you can do that with really any part of this design. If for some reason there's something that you didn't quite like or you wanted it illustrated a little better, add a line. Just use your outline tool and you'll be amazed on how quick and easy you can change things um, just by adding a line. Give that uh, offset tool a try. When you're in fill mode, it will really be able to change your designs and give you a completely different look. And uh, it might be just what your customers want. Tip number five. It's gonna be uh, building a little bit on what we just covered. Let's assume for a minute that I wanted to get a general shape around the perimeter of this design. How can I do that without having to do a bunch of work? Well, this is a way I approach it. I come over here, I select my design, I come over to my offset tool. And the goal is that I want an offset shape to be fairly tight to my overall design. And if I go outward, and I try to get it fairly close, you'll notice that I've got all these artifacts that I'm gonna to have to come in and delete and invariably I'm gonna miss one and it's not gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna engrave it and then I'm gonna catch it after I'm done. What I'd prefer to do is instead just make this outline way bigger than it needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just grow this outline until I get very few if no artifacts on the inside. I'm gonna say okay, and then I'm gonna reselect the perimeter outline. So before I had all these shapes that were selected and I'm gonna get those offset uh, artifacts all over. Now I've just got one shape that I'm working with and I'm gonna actually go backwards. So what I'm gonna do is select that shape, go inwards, and I'm gonna reduce, uh, and I can have this new shape hug my design as tight as I want it. And so we might go maybe two more clicks, something like that, and say okay. I just come back and get rid of that. And now I've got a nice tight uh, outline of my design. And I don't have to come in here and delete all those offset artifacts that you get when you're trying to do it in one fail swoop. So just grow that offset as big as you need to to get rid of all the artifacts in the middle, then select that perimeter and shrink it back down and you'll be good to go. Tip number six, have you ever estimated your job, looked at the time that it gives you and when it actually engraves your work or cuts out or whatever you're doing that your estimated time here versus your actual time can be way off. One of the things that you wanna do if that's the case is make sure that Lightburn is using the actual information off your controller uh, and not the Lightburn defaults. So typically the way you would do that is you would come up to, you, you have to have your laser on and connected to Lightburn Make sure it's in ready status. Come up here to the wrench icon, click on that, go over to the additional settings tab, click on that, and then these are gonna be defaulted. If you haven't done this before, this'll just be a light burn, or a light burn defaults. And depending on which laser you have, it might be close, or if you've got a higher end, a higher quality laser, more than likely these defaults aren't gonna be close. And so all you've gotta do is come in here and say read from controller. It's gonna go out there, grab those settings and put them in. And you'll notice that we're not changing any settings per se. All we're doing is copying the settings that are on your controller into this for your estimation, uh, uh, your preview mode. And you can see right here, these settings are not, uh, are to adjust preview and uh, simulation timing. They do not affect your controller. So all you're trying to do here is when I go to preview this and see about you know, what kind of time this is gonna take, it says it's gonna take eight minutes and 13 seconds to do this engrave. Is it close? Now it's never gonna be perfect, I'm gonna tell you that, but usually um, it, it's pretty close. I mean, I bid jobs all the time off of this and very rarely do I have a problem with that. So if your estimate versus your actual times are way off, and you only normally have to do this once, so once you go into the uh, wrench icon, into additional settings, 
Just read from controller. It'll load these settings. This is something that you only have to do one time and you're done. And hopefully that'll help you uh, uh, that your preview estimated time will be closer to actual. Tip number seven, and this one I just started using not too long ago and I really like it. One of the things that um, I, when I'm doing tumblers, and let's say that I've got a tumbler and I've got to line up the red light on the laser with the logo or something like that, I'm always driving my laser back to the user or origin position so I can make sure that that logo is centered. Um, a lot of times I don't like to grab my mouse, come over here and say go to origin. It, it's just, um, it's slower. I got to make sure that I hit this button for it to drive back to the starting position when I'm, when I'm engraving tumblers. And so what I've done is I've, uh, I've gone into uh, file down here to edit hotkeys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just search for user. And you can see right now, go to user origin does not have a shortcut. I'm going to assign a shortcut to that so I can use two different keys uh, to use that. And usually it's quicker when I do that than trying to grab the mouse, drive the mouse to over here where it says go to origin. And I find that this is really helpful. Um, so the two keys that I use is the Alt key and the Z key because they're right close together. I'll show you a picture. Um, and how you set this up is you notice that right now there's no shortcut. So if I click on this and then I come down here and I press on the Alt key and the Z key, only need one of them. So let's clear that and I'm going to go Alt Z and that's, if it stays green, you know that it's good to go. So now all I would have to do is say, okay. And now instead of having to go ahead and push this go to origin button, I can just hit the alt and the Z key and the laser will go back to wherever my user origin is set. And I find it's a lot faster than trying to grab the mouse, position the mouse over here to go to origin and it goes over so I can line up my tumblers on a logo, something like that. So that's how you assign the keys. It's just over here under edit hotkeys, type in what you're looking for. You can change several of these. Um, this is the only one that I've done, but I find it very handy to have a, a two keystrokes that I can drive that laser head to the user origin. Give it a try. I think you'll like it. Well, there you have it. Seven tips hopefully you hadn't heard and it will hopefully help you speed up your process so you can use Lightburn and get those projects on your laser. Just wanted to say thank you so much for all the support. We're over 21,000 subscribers now. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. That way you can be notified every time I release a video. If you uh, have the ability, hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button, and until next time, thanks and have a great day.